Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for our consideration this morning is our Old Testament lesson from Judges 6, the story of Gideon. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters through faith in Christ, this morning we begin a four-week sermon series entitled Reluctant Heroes of Faith. And so for the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about one of the great truths of the Scripture. And that is that God does not always call those who are eager, those who are qualified, those who are ready and willing to serve Him. In fact, so very often, He calls those who are reluctant, those who are hesitant, those who are unqualified, those who are worried, and those who are nervous about serving Him. And just to give you an example and a flavor of just how many characters in the scriptures resemble this sort of way that God works, I've got a short video for you. Think God can't use you? Think he only uses perfectly qualified people? Take a closer look. Moses was not a great speaker. Jonah ran from God. Jacob was a liar. Noah got drunk. Rahab was a prostitute. David had an affair. Jeremiah was depressed a lot. Solomon was rich in wisdom, but poor in lifestyle. John the Baptist was just plain poor. Timothy was too young. Abraham was too old. Lazarus was dead. Sarah was barren. Naomi was a widow. Gideon and Thomas both doubted, and so did Sarah. Peter lacked self-control. James and John were self-righteous. Paul had a short fuse. Well, so did Peter and Moses. Actually, lots of people did. God's army isn't perfect. It never has been. It's the march of the unqualified. Get in line. It becomes abundantly clear, doesn't it, as you look at those characters of the Scriptures, both Old and New Testament, as you see how God used people who were reluctant and unqualified to serve Him. And certainly Gideon fits into that group. Gideon was one of the judges. That means that he served the Lord between the time of when Joshua led God's people into the Promised Land after the wandering in the desert and before the time when God gave Israel kings. You remember Saul and then David and then Solomon before the kingdom split. But in that time in between there, there was a cycle of what would happen with God's people. You see, they would rebel against Him. They would worship other gods. And God would punish them by sending the peoples around them, the Philistines, the Midianites, to show them that they had rebelled against God. They would cry out in distress. And God in His grace would send them a judge, a rescuer, a savior who would deliver them from the hand of their enemies. And we see that pattern with Gideon. Unfortunately, as you read through the book of Judges, what you realize is that even after God saved His people, after usually a short time of peace, they would revert to following false gods once again. But as we look at Gideon, we recognize this truth of Scripture that God calls those who are reluctant and hesitant and unqualified to serve Him. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to specifically look at how Gideon responds to God's call to serve because I think as we look at how Gideon responded, we're going to see ourselves in Gideon. So I'd like for you to get out your worship guides and turn to page 3. I realize the print is a little bit small, and so if you can't see that, that's okay because you can listen as I read the words. When you get a whole chapter in there, you have to shrink the font a little bit, so we apologize for that. But Judges chapter 6, first I want to look at verse 12. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. 
But sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. Stop there. As the Lord comes to Gideon, Gideon's first response is to doubt that God even cares anymore about his people. Did you hear those incredible words that he said to the angel of the Lord? The Lord has abandoned us. You see, Gideon and the people of God were suffering. They were suffering horribly under the dominion of the Midianites. And for Gideon to consider even being a mighty warrior of God in the midst of that kind of suffering where he wasn't even sure if God was with them, when he wasn't even sure if God cared, well, that was ridiculous to Gideon. But think about it. Here God is coming to one of his people and he says, you've abandoned us, Lord. You know, I don't know about you, but if I were in the Lord's position there and someone had accused me of such a horrible thing, I think I might just move on to somebody else. Oh yeah, I've abandoned you, really? Isn't it that you've all abandoned me? But that's not how the Lord responds to Gideon's lack of faith, is it? Amazingly, what the Lord simply says is, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? The Lord doesn't even chastise Gideon for his doubts and for his lack of faith. He just continues to call and to send. Well, okay, so Gideon... Gideon has projected his doubts up to the Lord. He has wondered if God even cares about his people. He's wondered if God is even there with them or if he's abandoned them. But now let's continue. Look at verse 15. But Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. All right, so Gideon... Gideon has projected his doubt up onto the Lord and said, you know, I'm not sure we can trust the Lord anyways. I'm not sure he's with us. I think he's abandoned us. When the Lord continues to call and to send, Gideon says, okay, fine, but I'm certainly not qualified to do this. And so no longer looking up at the Lord, he's looking now inside of himself and saying, I can't do this. And his reasons and excuses were valid ones. In that culture, the tribe you were from, the clan you were from, and your position in your family were all extremely important regarding how you would be received as a leader. And Gideon looks at himself and he says, I don't have anything that would qualify me to lead this people in any way. How many times have you done that when the Lord has called you into some kind of service. How many times have you looked inside and just said, no, I'm just not the right person. I'm not smart enough. I don't know the scriptures well enough. I haven't been at this long enough. Certainly there are others with more gifts, others in a better position, others whom people will respect more than me. But how does the Lord respond to Gideon he simply answers, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites together. You see, the point was not the gifts that Midian had, the or that Gideon had. The point was the God that Gideon had. Let me say that again. The point was not the gifts and abilities that Gideon had. The point was the God that Gideon had. I will be with you. And that's all you need, Gideon. I'm reminded of Jesus before he ascended to heaven in what we often call the Great Commission, where there Jesus is on the mountain with those 11 disciples who were left. And Matthew tells us this amazing thing about those 11 disciples. It says that they worshipped Jesus, but some doubted. Can you imagine that? Some doubted. They had seen and knew that Jesus was crucified and had risen from death. Jesus had appeared to them multiple times after his resurrection. And still it says some doubted. And yet God doesn't 
doesn't look at that doubt and say, I'm going to get myself some new disciples. I'm going to get some who will really and fully and totally and completely put their trust in me. No, what does Jesus say? He says, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always, he says. You see, Jesus assigns those disciples this impossible task of spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth. Impossible except he promises his presence with them. And that is the point, people of God. When you are called in to service, and you think to yourself, I don't have the gifts, I don't have the abilities, I'm not qualified, I can't do this, people won't respect me, they won't follow. Your God is with you. It's not about your gifts and abilities. It's about your God. Well, Gideon isn't done. He isn't done with his doubts. He isn't done with his excuses. I want to uh, move ahead to verse 27. And we have this uh, interesting situation where the Lord gives Gideon an assignment. It's not the ultimate assignment to defeat the Midianites. He first gives Gideon an assignment to tear down the altar of the false gods of the people, to tear down specifically Baal's altar and the Asherah pole next to it. Asherah was a consort of Baal. It was the worst of the gods of the Canaanites that God's people worshipped time and time again. And so God calls Gideon and says, I want you to, to tear down this altar. I want you to cut down this Asherah pole and then use the wood and build a proper altar to me, the one true God. And if you caught it, Gideon answers the Lord's call and does what he asks, but when did he do it? Did you catch that? He did it at night. Why? Why? He was afraid. He was afraid of the people. He was afraid of his own father. He was afraid of his own family. He was afraid of the people of that town. How often, how often isn't that our story when the Lord calls us to do something, when the Lord calls us to serve, when the Lord calls us to lead? How often aren't we afraid? What are people going to think? Are they going to listen? What are going to be the consequences of actually serving God? How will this be received? No, we never struggle with that, do we? Which is why even in our own families, so many of us can't gather up the courage to speak a word of truth to someone that we love because we're afraid. We're afraid of what they might say. We're afraid of how they might react. We're afraid of the consequences to that relationship. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't know about you, but I see myself in Gideon more than I would like to see myself. I see myself in Gideon when I'm called to serve, but I can't get myself out of whatever situation or suffering or difficulty or challenge I'm in. You want me to serve you, Lord? I'm not even sure you're with me anymore. I see myself in Gideon when I have a call to serve in some capacity and I look inside my heart and I know immediately that I have no right doing anything to the Lord for the Lord because I have not the gifts nor the ability nor the reputation amongst the church to do what I have been called to do. I see myself in Gideon all the time. Lord, who am I to do this that you have called me to do? I see myself in Gideon when I'm afraid. When I'm afraid to serve because of the consequences. How are they going to feel about this? What are they going to think about me? How is this going to be heard? Will it be accepted? And what's it going to mean for the relationship going forward? You know what the good news is in all this? <laughs> God doesn't give up on Gideon. 
God doesn't give up on Gideon. And every single step of the way, God should have tossed this guy aside and started fresh. At every moment where Gideon questioned him, and the amount of questioning that Gideon has in just this one chapter is unbelievable. Come on, Lord. First, first make the fleece wet and the ground dry, then make, <laughs> then make the ground wet and the fleece dry. What is God? Some sort of a cosmic magician? And yet what does God do? Patiently, consistently, lovingly, with forgiveness and grace that we can't understand, continues to call Gideon into service and now this is the God that I know because this is the God that I've had a relationship with my whole life you see because my doubts and my fears and my insecurities and my questioning have been there for 40 years now every single step of the way when the Lord has called me I have come up with a million excuses as to why I can't do what he wants me to do I could bore you for hours with specifics. Thanks be to God, I won't. <laughs> but every step of the way, he says to me, I'm with you. It's not about you. It's not about your gifts or lack of. It's not about your faith or lack of. It's not about all of those consequences and those fears and those doubts that swim around your head constantly. It's about the fact that I am calling you to do something and when I call, I give the strength, I give the ability because no one can defeat me. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, we fool ourselves into thinking that when we fail to serve the Lord in the strength that He gives, we fool ourselves into thinking that we are being noble because we think somebody else can do a better job. No. If God is calling you, do it with the strength that He provides, with the presence that is all that you need. Now, Pastor Lambauer spilled the Spill the beans with the rest of the story. Thanks a lot, Pastor Wayne Bauer. <laughs> I want you to read chapter 7. Because chapter 6 is all about his doubts, his fears, and his insecurities. But chapter 7 is all about what happens when the Spirit of the Lord is upon His people. And that's what the Lord says at the end of this text, 2, verse 34. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, summoning the Abizrites to follow him. He sent messengers throughout Manasseh, calling them to arms, and also into Asher, Zebulon, and Naphtali, so that they too went up to meet them. 34, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. That's the same Spirit that you have living in you by holy baptism. The same Spirit that came upon Gideon is in your heart. Do you realize that? The same Spirit of God who gave Gideon the ability to do everything that God called him to do, that same Spirit dwells within you. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. How many of you say that Jesus is Lord? You've got the Spirit in you. No one can say that without the Spirit of the Lord being in you. That same Spirit that gave Gideon that ability to defeat the Midianites. Well, now the Lord probably hasn't called you to defeat the Midianites. Please don't try. They actually don't exist anymore. But that same Lord continues to call His people to serve and to lead and to let others know of the glory of our God. Your brothers and sisters, through faith in Christ, I want you to search your hearts and your minds today and this week. And I want you to find those corners in your hearts and minds where you find reluctance to serve the Lord. And there are as many possibilities for serving the Lord as there are people in this place. But if you find yourself with that reluctance and that hesitance to serve the Lord, remember, first of all, that your God will not give up on you. The God who sent His Son to die for you, the God who loves you and forgives you, will continue to call you. But then also, with His power and with His strength, 
Ask for an increase in faith. Ask that you might be used for God's kingdom and for His glory. For Jesus' sake and in His name. Amen. Please stand.